Hello folks, my name is Mark. This is Usenet Videos. How are you guys doing? So today we're taking a look at the Tapwave Zodiac, which if you don't know what this is, it's a nice little handheld gaming unit uh, PDA kind of thing that was released by a company called Tapwave in 2003. And the cool thing about this is that it runs a version of the Palm OS 5 operating system. So if you have any old uh, software laying around that was for your old Palm Pilot, it'll probably run on this thing, which actually makes it pretty cool because, you know, pre-smartphones, that's what I used to use was uh, Palm. <laughs> I used to have a Palm Pilot. So these things are pretty awesome. Um, so a little thing, a little info about these guys. Um, they have a 200 megahertz Motorola uh, IMX1 R9 processor. I don't really know what that means, but... <laughs> and uh, this particular version is the Zodiac 2. You can tell by the little 2 down here. And the Zodiac 1 has um, 32 megabytes of storage. And the Zodiac 2 has 128 megs of storage. But the cool thing is, is that you can use external... Um, SD cards to hold everything too. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And it's got lots of other little uh, doohickeys on it. Uh, it's got infrared, Bluetooth, uh, USB 2.0, uh, Wi-Fi, and uh, pretty good stuff. These guys, let's take a look at the unit. It's nice. Uh, it's got this sort of me metallic shell around the outside. I think it's metal. It feels like metal. Um, and they all come with this sort of uh, little leather you know, screen covered looking thing. And this one is so new that it still has the plastic on the front. So you can kind of see my ring light being uh, reflected in the plastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel that off. Cause that's, you know, there you go. 17 years, this plastic has been on here. <laughs> and this is always the best part of when you get new electronics is taking all of these little plastic protector thingies off. It's just like, shh. <sighs> Nice, perfectly clean, I love that. It's so satisfying. Anyway, so you've got four buttons on the side here. Uh, you can't really see those colors very well, but it's uh, blue, red, yellow, and green buttons. And then you have a nice little thumbstick over here. It's an analog self-centering thumbstick. And then another button right there, which, you know, I think it's just another action button. This is your home button, power button. And then up here is a hot sync button. That's how old this thing is. It's because it used to hot sync, you know, like a P like a PDA did. And then um, let's see on the on back here you've got some grips on the back, and then you've got two shoulder buttons up here. These are where the SD cards go, so you can put games in one. And then this is like an external SD card, right? Okay. And then looking at the back here. You know, same old stuff. You got a reset button. If it ever crashes, you can just hit that thing and it resets. And then this little bar is where the stylus goes. Right, just kind of clicks in back there. One thing about these uh, consoles is that the rubber used for these uh, shoulder buttons, and especially for the little clips that go back here, is starting to deteriorate because it's been so long. So there's supposed to be two little clips that hold in the stylus and they've both deteriorated and broken off. <laughs> so you can can't, so you can see it doesn't hold my stylus anymore, right? Now I've seen these in much worse shape than this one. This one is actually in pretty good shape for, for what it is, right? I have another one, which you can kind of see is, is really deteriorated a lot. So if you look on the side, all the rubber is starting to, to melt off here, you know, all around the edges, stuff like that. This one got a lot of use. These little black things that hold the clips in have completely fallen out, and you can even see the circuit board going through there. These machines are notorious for having a certain problem, which something goes wrong in the back. Like if the battery runs out or there's some, something wrong with a ribbon cable, I don't know. And what happens is that it'll turn on and you won't actually be able to see anything. And what's happening is that you can still hear it selecting things, right? When you click on it, so you still hear it selecting things. So what happens, like, let's say I'm gonna reset this. And now you'll hear these three knocks. That's the boot up screen, right? So if any of you out there can figure that shit out, please let me know, because I've been scurrying the internet trying to figure out what the hell is wrong with it and how can I fix it. Some things, some some people think it's a ribbon cable that went bad. I replaced the cable, that didn't work. I replaced the internal battery, that didn't work. 
don't know what's happening. So that's what my, my spare one that's messed up has this problem. So I don't know, which is really too bad, you know, but I'm thinking I might just actually sell this to somebody who knows how to fix it. Fortunately, my main console, which actually looks good, doesn't have that problem. Boots right up. <laughs> so just so I, you, I can show you what the boot up screen looks like, let's reset the console. And now you'll see it. See? <laughs> All right. So anyway, here we go, folks. So the um, cool thing about this is that it is pretty much just like an organizer. So let's see, uh, you start with this home screen and you've got different things you can choose. There's a uh, media stuff. So if you have movies or you can put, uh, you know, um, you can put uh, books on there, stuff like that, or music or whatever, right? And, uh, you know, then it, it also has things like utilities here. You know, here's your hot sink thing and then there's a graffiti thing. So graffiti is basically, um, since there's no keyboard, you had to like write you know, so if you want to write something, you have to kind of use the stylus to do it. You know, you remember this is before like, uh, <laughs> right. So this is like before smartphones. So, you know, I think this thing came out, yeah, four years before the first iPhone, right? So anyway, on the side, you have your little menu. Here's a home thing. This opens up a menu. This is a search thing. You know, you can find stuff. This changes your volume. So let's turn up a little bit, right? This changes your screen. Pretty cool. So let's change that down there. Okay, and then um, let's show you what the games look like. So right now, uh, these are the games that are installed on the machine. Right now, all I have is Solitaire, but I also have Spy Hunter. So just to kind of show you, here's the uh, case that came with Spy Hunter. This is what the uh, you know this is what the cases look like. They just say Zodiac at the top, and they come in standard DVD cases. You know so pretty much indistinguishable from any uh, modern game but the actual games come on little SD cards like that so Spy Hunter is actually the only branded game that I have for the machine so let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can watch me play Spy Hunter and all you gotta do is click on it and then it zooms up and we should be able to start playing here in a second. So let me turn this light down a little so you can see it. There we go. All right. And you know, the graphics are actually not half bad. You know, they're, they're probably comparable to a PlayStation 1. You know, maybe slightly better. I mean, it's kind of hard to go by because this is the only actual like, you know, branded game that I have for it. Um, but it, it seems to play, and you know, the frame rate is pretty good. You know, here comes some bad guy cars. Woo, okay. I got missiles. You know, so frame rate looks good. You know, textures look good. Right? Can't really see much of a draw distance with this particular game. You know, not bad. I don't know if you can hear the sound effects. I'm trying to play this and keep it centered inside of the uh, viewfinder at the same time, so probably not going to do that good. <laughs> but you get the idea. Not too bad, you know, the graphics don't actually look half bad. So let's exit out of this. Uh, let's see, let's just, at any time you can just hit the home thing and it'll just go straight to it. So the cool thing is, in order to install games, all you have to do is get a nice large size SD card and all of the games you can pretty much ooh, you can pretty much download nowadays because Tapwave went out of business and you know and plus it runs all the Palm games too so here's my two gigabyte card here and I've got all kinds of games here I got Doom I got Duke Nukem so let's play Doom 2 right and this is an actual whoa okay sorry I keep hitting the thing this is an actual um branded game that was released for Tapwave Zodiac as well. Right. So let's let's get started here. Let's just do not too rough. Alright, so you can kind of see, you know, let me try to zoom in as much as I can. Not bad, not bad. 
It's a shoulder button strife back and forth. Whoa. So there is a bug with this, right, which makes the, um, makes you oversteer. And there's a patch, and I can't figure out how to get the patch to work, which is like kind of crappy. So what'll happen is that you'll be walking and then suddenly it'll just go way over there. See, like that, like, you know. Right. So, but it actually looks really well. And if I could just figure out how to get the patch working. See, see that? See, it just did that automatically and I can't do it. But if I could just figure out how to get the patch working, I think this would be a very, very, you know, well done and well playable version of Doom 2. You know, looks really good. And actually plays good, except for that one control flaw. Alright, so let me uh, zoom in just a little bit on this guy. There we go. But, you know, let me show you some more stuff. Let's do um, Duke Nukem. So Duke Nukem... I know it's the I know it's that game because Duke Nukem doesn't have that problem. Duke Nukem actually controls really really well and looks just as good. So right on. <laughs> Duke Nukem Mobile. Let's just do new. Yeah, let's do medium. All right. Looks pretty good, don't it? Same kind of controls, you know. Damn, I'm getting my ass beat. Where'd all these guys come from? They weren't there a second ago. <laughs> okay, I just got creamed. Let's try that one more time. All right. It's hard, I'm playing it through the... Uh, playing this through the viewfinder, which is like, you know. I think we need more ammo. Let's go over here. Mm, turn back around. Okay, here we go. Damn it, I keep hitting the wrong button. Here we go. Damn pigs. Get some more ammo. Shit. Did I get him? There. Much better, much better. Key card. But anyway, you can see uh, frame rate is really good. Graphics look really good as far as like, you know, I mean, they look as good as any PlayStation 1 game. Here's a couple of other sort of Palm OS 5 games that I downloaded. Let's see. Uh, uh, we got Bejeweled, stuff like that, you know. Uh, mm, let's see. Ch -ch 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 Z Hexen. Quake. Quake doesn't run very well. This is just a, um, it's called Z-Quake. So it's, it's just a port of Quake. I don't think this was actually like a released game for it. But you know, it runs okay. I mean, if you can, you can't really see that, can you? Let me turn this light down a little bit and then maybe that'll help. In fact, you know, I can think I could just turn the light off completely. So you can kind of see it's, it's a little, uh, dark, you know, um, and then when like, and the controls are very like stiff, you know, so like, let's go in here. Well, that's the hard skill. Normal skill. Okay. Let's go to normal skill. And then, uh, I think you walk into here to start the game. 
There we go, loading. So, one thing I noticed with this is that it's like very um, sluggish. Right, so there's your jump. But I noticed firing is like very like, you know, like I'm trying to shoot right now and it's not shooting. So, there it goes. It's like it only like it only fire when you're like next to the guy for some reason. Damn. Anyway, you get the idea. So I think it's playable. Plus, it involves lots of weird stuff with clicking around. Like in order to swim, you got to click up here and all this other crap. So most likely playable. But so far, I've been messing with it and I can't get very far with it. So anyway, besides those, you have like lots of little um, Palm Pilot games that you can play and stuff. You know, like here's uh, Bejeweled, you know, that was first uh, dropped on Palm Pilot. And, uh, you know, pretty cool stuff. Whoa. Let's just play a quick normal game of Bejeweled. If you haven't played Bejeweled before, you know, it's just basically this sort of like you know, Candy Crush kind of thing. In fact, this was Candy Crush before Candy Crush was a thing. <laughs> right. Uh, right. And in fact, like this, I think this is actually like the first time this sort of like color swapping game like actually became really popular. You know. But you've got all kinds of games like this, you know. Lots of these little sort of like hand um, puzzler type things. You know, let's go back. Go back. Let's go home. Let's try another one. Let's see what else we got in here. Um, and then there's lots of homebrew stuff. Like here's a homebrew version of Galaxian called uh, Galax, <laughs> right? That runs on Palm. So let's just uh, restart here. Okay, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. We are the Galax score table. Let's do it. And fire! You know, not much home to write, you know, to write home about, but remember this is just like some dude in his bedroom, you know, coding a game for the fun of it. So, and the fact that it's like you get to enjoy this stuff for free, it's like, yeah, you know, you can't complain, right? I'm trying to find a uh, Galaxian, because I always like Galax or Galaga, rather. I'm trying to find Galaga, because I always like Galaga more than Galaxian. It's just a funner game. You know. Anyway, but yeah, pretty nifty, right? And uh, so, you know, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of free Palm Pilot software out there that you can download and play. <laughs> right? I got things like, uh, you know, a couple of other ones. Here's uh, uh, Tomb Raider, which was never actually released for this. So this is like a beta, and it is rather um, unfinished, I guess. It starts uh, eventually, give it a minute, <laughs> and it's kind of uh, unplayable. So here goes Tomb Raider, right? All right, so let's, uh, let's see. See, I don't know what any of this shit means or anything. Oh, that's just the volume, all right. And I see it's letting me uh, select a game here. So you can tell that this is kind of an early build. And uh, unfortunately, it, it kind of plays like it. You know, the, it's not completely finished. Oh. Right. Can't really tell what I'm doing. You know. Come on, swim up. Am I going to die here because I'm going to run out of air or something? I mean, that's cool that it was, like, released for us. So that we can, like, play it and all. But, uh, yeah. This is definitely a very early, uh, build. You know, you can kind of tell. Am I about to die because it's too cold? Is that what's going to happen? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Come on, out. There we go. 
I mean, it looks pretty good though. If you look at the, the graphics, if you look at the frame rate, of course, when you start to like, you know, move around and shoot things, stuff like that. Somebody's shooting at me. See, I, I can't like control where I'm, I'm aiming or anything. Up, oh, fell back in the water. So yeah, it's like really hard to control, you know, but hey, it's unfinished and what do you expect? So yeah, let's exit out of this too. So one more thing I gotta mention before we end this thing is that in order to charge the battery, you need to have one of these sync cables. And it comes with this sort of very kind of proprietary sort of sync cable that has, uh, you know, you, that, and that's one thing I never really liked about stuff like this, you know, is that it just doesn't use like a normal AC adapter. It's like you have to get this sort of sync cable thing and then that actually goes through this big wire and it splits off into a USB thing and then also the other side is your AC right there. And that was so, because back in the day, the way these things worked is that you would hot sync it with your computer. So you would go into your desktop software and like say you had your address book and you would put in all your addresses and then you would plug this guy down in the bottom like that and then click this thing and then it would hot sync it and then that way it would just transfer everything to your machine you know kind of the same way like people do that with their iPhones and, and iTunes nowadays you know that that sort of you know where you can just like transfer files back and forth I don't think anybody really does that nowadays you know with stuff like their contacts or whatever it's all stored on the cloud so you don't even really need it <laughs> that much anymore but um you know this is uh, back you know be forewarned like if you get one and you don't have this cable, this cable is hard, is, is as hard to find as the um, actual, you know, device itself. <laughs> so, you know, be prepared to pay 50, 60, 70 bucks just for this thing, <laughs> right? So that's uh, that's kind of a disadvantage of this. So anyway, um, should you pick one up? Well, you know, I recommend it because you know, there's lots of really neat things you can do with it. You know, you can go online with it. Um, I haven't been able to actually get the hot sync to work with uh, Windows 10, but you don't even really need that anymore. You know, because um, you can basically, uh, once you unlock it, which is really easy, there's a program that you can download that lets you um, run unsigned uh, software. Then you don't even really need to hot sync anything anymore. You know, but it's actually pretty cool. It's got lots of little uh, utilities, you know, uh, organizers and stuff like that, you know, and uh, things like memo pads and, and address books, even though you don't even need any of that stuff if you have a smartphone. But, you know, for what it, for, for back in the day, this was actually kind of like very advanced, you know, it's pretty cool. And plus you can watch videos and put music on it, that kind of thing, if you like, you know, are into that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I recommend picking one up, you know, they're, they're really, um, kind of sort of expensive if you want to get one in good shape I mean you could you're looking at at least 80 bucks to maybe 150 depending on what kind of software comes with it um, and if you were a user of Palm Pilots back in the day and you got all that old uh, all those old Palm software you know hanging out in your closet or on a hard drive someplace it's a good it's a good uh, little machine in order to like run all of that stuff and that's really the the main reason to own one of these is is you know the ability to run palm software because there is literally hundreds upon hundreds of free games and utilities and things out there on the internet for palm os that are just free nowadays it's all freeware because you know palm is like gone <laughs> right and there's a very big like hobbyist kind of uh scene out there people making their own homebrew stuff for palm you know palm uh devices so Definitely worth uh, checking out. If you can get one for a good price, I would definitely recommend it. Anyway, that's all I got, folks. Adios.